Now one of the first things that I want to do with any new flash file is set up the document settings. If you don't have anything selected on the stage, your document settings will show up in the property panel on the side here. The first one I want to look at is the flash player itself. And we can change that by going to the profile and choosing edit. Now we've got a lot of other settings in here, but we're going to be talking about most of these when we get to the publish chapter at the end. Right now though, I want to go back to that player setting here at the top. And as you can see, we can set for any version of the Flash Player that's ever been made. Now in most cases, you're going to want to stick with the up-to-date ones. But for some projects, you'll need to target an older version of the player so that more people can watch your movies. And if you need to do that, you can just select it right here at the beginning. If you select an older version of the player before you get started on making your movie, Flash will actually alert you as to which settings work with that version of the player. If you wait too long, you're going to have to figure all those out yourself. Now notice we can also target versions of the mobile player, that's flashlight down here at the bottom, and the new Adobe Air, which allows me to take my Flash movie and deliver it as a compiled application that my user can install. For our movie, we're just going to leave it at Flash Player 10, and I'm going to click OK. Now the other document setting that I want to set up usually at the beginning is my stage size. We have a default size set of 550 pixels by 400 pixels, but I can change that once again by going to the edit button and we'll just type in a new number for the dimensions. We're going for kind of a widescreen look for our application so I'm going to make it 850 by 450. We can also change things like the background color and the frame rate but I'm going to leave those both as they are for now and just click OK. Now with a larger stage we can see that the next thing we need to manage is the actual scale of the stage panel itself. We can do this a number of different ways the first one being this pull down menu at the top right hand corner. I can just choose 50% and there we can see our entire widescreen stage. Now in addition to using the pull down menu, I can also use the zoom tool over in the tool palette. This functions pretty much like a normal zoom tool. If I click it's going to zoom in and if I option or alt click on the PC I can zoom back out. You can also drag to select a certain area and it will zoom right into that area. Now right next to the zoom tool we've also got the hand tool and that's going to allow me to pan or move the stage window around the screen. Now this is important because I want to be able to move the stage window and not the items on the stage itself. I can do this at any zoom level and make sure that I've got the area that I'm working on right in front of me. Now I also like to give out keyboard shortcuts for this as well because I use these a lot myself. They're a lot handier than grabbing the tools all the time. So let me just switch back to the normal selection tool for starters. And I can zoom into my stage by using Control Plus here on the PC. And of course that would be Command Plus on the Mac. And I can use Control Minus or Command Minus to zoom back out. Now for the hand tool, that's even easier. You can just press and hold the space bar down. And you can see as the space bar is being held, I have my hand tool available to me. I can do any kinds of adjustments to the stage that I want, and when you let go of the space bar, it's going to go back to whatever tool that you had previously selected. Now that's going to work everywhere in the program except when you're typing text, because of course the space bar is going to give you a space.